Right, this afternoon, I'm here at the North Elmham Chapel, misleadingly titled building, which in this illustration here appears to be a chapel, a very church-like building, but its later incarnation became a castle, a bolt hole for the Bishop of Norwich. Uh, you could even call it the Bishop of Norwich's personal panic room. Um, a rare example in Britain of a fortified church. So North Elmham Chapel, we ran it, call it Elm. North Elmham Chapel, we shall walk inside and have a good look at it. The site has a long history predating the Norman Conquest. It had been the centre of a Saxon bishop prick, i.e. the Saxon bishop was based here. And then after about 1071, when the Normans had invaded, the bishop prick was transferred over to Thetford, and then today it's in Norwich. So there's been a long connection with bishops and North Elm. But the structure that you're looking at now is very odd, and for British standards, odder than most. If we look down here, you will see the two incarnations of the entrance you just looked at. This here is the church with the church tower next to it, but later it's no longer a church, it's a castle. The interior has been raised some, oh, let's say two meters in height inside. Another tower, quite a loose structure has been built on this side to create flanking fire either side of the entrance. And now it's ceased to be a castle, and it's now, it ceased to be a church, has now become a castle. I'm going to go into some text here, which you can freeze frame if you wish. Explain a little bit of the background. I'm swinging over to here. And in particular, the date we're interested in is about 1388. So up to here. And again, we're looking at the original church tower here, and a later tower waned on here. Now as a church, you could walk straight in through what used to be a door. As you can see, the door has disappeared. Later, a drawbridge was put in, and if one looks to where the sandy material ends there, that's roughly where the drawbridge hinged down. The bit on top appears to be some later infill. Now, what was it coming down to? An earth bank had actually been built in front of the castle. To create a ditch, defensive ditch here, the earth had been banked up. This is just as if it, this is on a war games table and you've got your flat castle here. You want to create the impression of a ditch, so you put some foam in, cover it with a bit of um, flock etc and oh yeah that's crazy the ditch effect well, that's exactly what they had here that is the natural ground level walking in from the village and they put an embankment all the way around it and created effectively a ditch or moat around it we're now standing at the western end of the structure and what we have here is a rather complex series of walls from different periods part of this relates to the church which as you say have been here already. And part of it is later rebuilding as a essentially a defensive structure. Now if we look down here, just there, this shows the interior of what would have been the Western Tower. And clearly it's in use as a church. And we are here, at that point, apsidal end, typical Norman structure. Uh, the apse was the rounded Romanesque type of uh, 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 east end of church, later replaced by a flatter version. So this is the West Tower. There. That rather obvious seam, visible just here, shows how crudely the second gate tower was nailed onto the front of the building. It's almost as if um, we need to create a double gate effect double tower effect to shield the gate will nail this on and look you can actually see it's been very poorly bonded 
as to this opening here no one's thoroughly explained it to me it is just possible as this is built after 1388 when cannon early bombards are appearing it's just possible this could be a, a, a holiday out embrasure for a gun why would there be a gun there because it would provide flanking fire all the way along to that wall there and again you've got this effect of the earth having been raised here to create a ditch or a bit of a moat effect here now here we are at the eastern end of the church you can see this typical Norman rounded apse effect but why did this later turn into a castle look up here and look off to this side you can see that the earth bank that's come around here a later addition above the the natural ground level has now been opened out into a ditch going all the way around there and back around where those two people are more importantly beyond in the next tree line over over there over to there there's another ditch so you've effectively got an outer ward and an inner ward over here now who's done this and why bishop hugh dispenser uh, the bishop of norwich was involved in putting down the 1381 peasants revolt made him very unpopular and he's a sort of uh, local uh, bishop you don't want to have uh, by 3088 it appears that he must have been even more unpopular and they suddenly decided he needed a bolt hole in effect the bishop's panic room so this chapel stroke church suddenly began to develop defenses now we're now on the north side of the structure again you've got this ditch not quite as deep as it was before with some tumbled in material from over here where those people are standing it's been identified as a possible kitchen and you've got more structure here and possibly evidence of an outer wall um, obviously we had, had stone robbing since the building was abandoned much material has disappeared but here you can see the depth of the inner ditch right over there we have the the substantial stone remains of north elmham chapel the bishop hugh dispenser's private little bolt hole but what do we have behind us there's the inner ditch swinging around this way now swinging around this way swinging around this way to here here is the great outer ditch with two people walking past to give you a sense of scale part of it has been filled in here possibly for victorian access to the, the the land it looks like they've taken part of the earth bank from here and just thrown it in but the ditch also extends off in that direction and then curls around through those trees so we've got a substantial double ditch effect around most of the building extending around there extending around here and back to here what would this outer enclosure have been used for stabling is the most obvious thing possible storage of fodder barns possibly a retinue he may have had his own troops and he needed somewhere to keep the boys so we've got a large outer enclosure which would have had buildings in it barns stables etc and then back to here we have the actual um, chapel stroke castle stroke panic room now why did he need it 1381 we had the peasants revolt one of the most famous casualties of the peasants revolt was simon sudbury the archbishop of canterbury now if the top boss can get his head chopped off in the peasants revolt what's likely to happen to hugh dispenser as the bishop of of norwich uh, i believe that by the middle of 1380s he was getting very paranoid and he needed somewhere to hide a bolt hole so he's taken north elmham chapel and turned it into effectively north elmham panic room castle fortress of solitude call it what you like um, there remains some sort of evidence of religious activity at one end of the site but in a second we'll see how militarized the other bit became 
right, this rather confusing mass of rubble is in fact the interior of what should be a church. We've got walls over there which shouldn't be there. We've got the remains of a bit of a pillar worked into that. That looks like it could have been part of an original Norman archway. Then we've got a large flight of stairs here, which led up to where the entrance to the castle would have been. Trust me that just over the end of there, there is a very deep drawbridge pit. A uh, drawbridge pit is where the drawbridge tips back into a deep pit, so the, it sort of acts as a, a pivot or a seesaw, and the pit itself then becomes uh, an obstacle. Should someone break in through the door, they then tumble into the pit. Well, that is over there, and if I can get there in a minute, I'll get some film of it. But this is meant to be the interior of a church. If it is, it's the interior of no church that I've ever been in. This bit here could have seen service as a church. There's some indications it may have been a, a bit of a transept on the far side still. But the rest of this is purely a castle. Now, I've noticed there's some fencing here. Uh, English Heritage at the moment is having problems with maintenance of some of its properties. I mentioned this at, uh, on my Baconsthorpe film, and again we've got more fenced off here because of danger of falling objects. And they're starting to catch up with some of their repairs following the collapse of one of their castles on the Solent estuary in, uh, on the south coast. This is a quick glimpse of the chapel as it was first used and built. 12th century view, that could be a priest there or even a Bishop of Norwich himself. But of course it was a later Bishop of Norwich who butchered the other end of the building and effectively turned it into his pa private panic room. As a church or chapel, this would have normally doors on both sides. And here we have a, a view of the rather striking north door. Wonderful piece of moulding around the archway there. Very similar to what we see at uh, Castle Rising, which had been the subject of one of my previous films. And here you've got uh, articles of capitals that would have taken part in the wall. However, come over to here, and this is the north door today. Some stage or another, it's been filled in. You can see one side of the door is here. You can see one of those mouldy capitals down there in the wall, and that's where the rest of it would have gone. And the entire wall has been quickly filled in with a much finer flint rubble compared with that side. And this is part of the fortification of North Elmham Chapel to turn it into effectively a small castle or uh, as I keep calling it the Bishop of Norwich's private panic room over here this structure has been identified as an oven again something you don't find in a castle uh, you've got the trace of brick there etc and it suggests that this area here may have actually been used as a kitchen so again, a kitchen adjacent to a church is not typical. Kitchen adjacent to a small castle, private form of defense, far more probable. Here we are back at the original entrance where we started. This would have been the entrance into the church. In other words, it would have been the south door of the church. But some stage or another, the ground level outside has been raised and a drawbridge was put in at that level with the original church tower on this side, providing defensive cover on one side, and this entirely spurious second nailed on tower put on this side. Now walking inside, I'm gonna to have to be very careful on this rock, so I will fall over. We now move into the west tower, inside the west tower, and some stage the entrance was there, drawbridge went that way, and this here is the drawbridge pit. Now you don't get drawbridge pits inside churches, but that, trust me, is a drawbridge pit. I'm swinging it around blind so I can't see what's going on. Uh, clearly Hugh Dispenser, Bishop of Norwich, 
was a bit worried about his personal safety. So the drawbridge would have been roughly that level originally, based on what we see outside. Anyone coming through there who'd smashed through the rotated drawbridge would then tumble into that pit. That's classic use of a drawbridge pit. A little shot before we finish. That's one of the surviving staircases from when this was, probably when this was a church. This would have gone up inside the original tower, going up to a higher level in the west tower and it's part of the original church history of this building. Just going to do my final piece to camera here. Uh, this site is midway between Fakenham and the county town or county city of Norwich. It's an English heritage site. It's open most times of the day. Uh, you're more than welcome to come along and visit it at any reasonable time. There's the gatehouse converted from the original church. Um, if you've enjoyed watching my video, please feel free to subscribe. If you enjoy, feel free to give me a thumbs up. And if you've uh, got any comments, criticisms, whatever, please feel free to leave them. I'm not perfect, and I've certainly got no illusions as to my own failings. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it.